If you're running an aftermarket EFI system, you'll need some fuel pressure regulation. Aeroflow Performance has four different options that might suit your application. Hey everyone, Pat from Aeroflow Performance, and today I'm gonna to go through some EFI fuel pressure regulator options that we've got as part of our front to back fuel system solution. So when you've got uh, electronic fuel injection, you're running injectors, um, you're generally talking a high pressure fuel pump because compared to a carbureted system, you're gonna have quite a high demand for fuel pressure so that the injectors can operate accurately um, and correctly. Now, from that fuel pump, you're gonna be talking in an aftermarket application all the way up to something like 500 plus liters per hour uh, of fuel pump. Uh, and the pressure that's supplied from that is gonna be quite high. So talking you know, upwards of 100 PSI, which is well above what your injection system is gonna run at. The injection system generally will run at uh, three bar or four bar of fuel pressure. How do you get that pressure back down? Well, you use a fuel pressure regulator. So basic operation of the fuel pressure regulator is that the fuel feed from the fuel pump will enter into the reg. There's a diaphragm inside uh, with a ball seat. The base pressure will be set by a spring. Once that pressure is reached, the diaphragm will open the return port and then bleed off that excess pressure back to the fuel tank or cell or whatever it is that you've got in the back of the back of the car. Now, that base pressure setting is known by your ECU or the control computer uh, for the engine management system. And then we can adjust the reg to suit what that base pressure is. So this locking nut undoes on the top, you use an Allen key uh, on the grub screw and you drive that down to increase the amount of base pressure. Now you monitor that with a gauge, for example. So you can fit a gauge into the side of these regs. Uh, or if you've got a sensor, for example, that is plumbed into your ECU, you can see the fuel pressure on the ECU display wherever it is that you've got it. Multiple different options when it comes to fuel regulators. All of the regulators are made from a billet aluminium 6061 T6 material. So they're very sturdy, they're very consistent. You don't have any issues with the core or any issues of the components of the regulator failing. We've got a few different sizes. Now, if we get into sizing, uh, we'll start it off with the smaller, I guess, of the options, which is this little three port regulator here. So. Uh, an inlet, an outlet, and then your return uh, on the bottom. These are dash six ORB inlets uh, and outlets, and then the return is also a dash six ORB. So you can fit your adapters, your adapter fittings, and your AN lines to wherever it is that you need to go. This reg is rated to around 800 flywheel horsepower, just basically because of the body size and the flow um, that it's capable of. The larger the fuel system, the larger the engine, the larger the requirement, the f you f want to go to a physically larger body that also has larger ports. 800 horsepower is easily achievable with this. It's also set up to suit a boosted application. So you can see this little barb on the side here is for a boost reference port. So for every one pound of pressure that goes into this port, so as your engine makes boost and it starts to create positive pressure, that's a, a way of saying to the fuel system, I need more fuel. So this little, uh, this little port is going to allow boost pressure to press down on the diaphragm, and it's going to increase the base pressure by one PSI for every one PSI of boost. So it's a one-to-one -one regulator. 
boost comes in, you add one PSI, it increases the base pressure by one PSI. So that way you're keeping a consistent amount of fuel pressure in the rail to the injectors so they can continue to work right and then your ECU will scale that as it goes up, as the requirement increases. So that's the 800 horsepower three port. Stepping up from there, we've got the 1200 horsepower three port. So same situation, inlet, outlet, return on the bottom. These are all dash six ORB ports on here as well. So dash six will definitely flow up to that limit, no problems at all. Uh, you've also got an auxiliary port on the front here. So again, you can run your fuel pressure gauge, an analog gauge, or you can run a fuel pressure sensor to your ECU that will pick up the pressure that you're running, the base pressure and the uh, dynamic pressure as well. So as it comes up with boost, you'll be able to monitor that. Same situation, adjuster on the top, that can increase or decrease the set base pressure and the one-to-one -one, uh, input on the side. Thirdly, we've got this big guy here, which is our 2000 horsepower capable rake. Few variations here compared to the other two. Uh, so obviously extra ports. So why do you need so many outlet or inlet ports? Mostly outlet. Basically because if you're running a nitrous system that has nitrous solenoids, you also need fuel supply for those solenoids as well. Uh, so a wet system, you've got additional, so you can go one in from the fuel pump, for example, one out to your fuel rails or wire that off into a fuel rails. And then if you've got numerous sets of uh, stages of nitrous, you have those extra ports so you can feed them directly. These are also a dash eight ORB port. So a larger volume of fuel can flow through this regulator. The larger body is there, so, and also the larger ports so that you can flow a larger volume. So if you've got multiple injectors, multiple fuel rails, for example, like a V configuration or a, a six cylinder with two uh, fuel rails uh, and you know, 12 or 16 injectors, you'll need a larger volume of fuel to support those and keep it consistent. We've also got uh, the Dash 8 ORB return, so a much larger return. So when you're, at, when you're running a large fuel pump, for example, that's gonna pump a large volume of fuel, that's gonna come into the reg, but if it's only at a set base pressure, like a naturally aspirated uh, application, uh, or if it's you know, at idle, low throttle inputs, there's no boost present, uh, that's not gonna increase that base, base pressure with the boost reference, you'll need to bypass all that excess fuel. So it's really important that the return is able to keep up with the pump uh, in the way that you need it to not be a restriction. So if you restrict the return on a regulator, then all of a sudden the pressure increases because it can't bypass enough. So that's why on the 2000 horsepower reg, we've gone to that larger fitting size. Uh, as you can see, there's also, in addition to the four ports on the side, there's also two auxiliary 1 8 NPT ports on this reg. Uh, so that means that you can run perhaps uh, a gauge so that you can see the pressure while tuning from the front of the engine, for example, and then also the sensor in the other side so that you can feed the data to your ECU. So multiple options there, uh, and that's a great little product. The fourth, uh, the fourth reg that we've got today is, this is a great little option for someone who is starting off with a carb, uh, carbureted engine setup, but has plans to go to an EFI setup later on. So whether that's uh, your likes of a, a Sniper EFI conversion, or if you've got uh, an engine that basically came in two, two versions, so earlier versions of that engine, such as like a, a Holden V8, for example, um, was a carbureted option. And then later they moved to EFI, and you plan on upgrading that for, let's say, if you want maybe higher performance or more drivability or anything like that, you have that option. This little regulator here is actually capable of supporting a carbureted system with a spring that will run from three to 20 PSI of base pressure. But then you can swap out to this taller spring and that will actually support uh, an EFI fuel pressure system as well. So, and that runs from uh, 30 PSI through to 70 PSI. So you've got a great range of adjustment in that little unit and it means that you don't actually have to upgrade the 
upgrade the reg or you need to buy a whole new reg uh, because they're a bit of an investment and you know people doing things at home or you know they're working with a little bit of a budget that saves you doing things twice um, so that reg actually comes with both springs uh, so you can set it up for whatever type of uh, what's whatever type of uh, fuel injection system you're running so in addition to uh, obviously converting from carb to EFI uh, this regulator obviously you can go back the other way as well so if you're starting off with an engine that uh, is EFI, um, you can run it that way. And then if you want to convert it back to um, carbureted, same deal. You can just take the spring out, pull the top off, swap that out, set the diaphragm to a lower base pressure, and you're good to go. Um, plenty of guys will use this, um, say, in that similar type of conversion. Even if you've still got a EFI, like a 40 millimeter uh, fuel pump, uh, that's designed for, say, like these little surge tanks or an in-tank option, you can run that with the EFI pump and this will still bypass enough so that you don't have to change the pump too. So we're saving, basically saving money, you're not having to do things twice, you've got all that flexibility in this setup. Um, you have to note that it is a return style reg, so if you're running it in a carb uh, situation, it is designed to bypass. Um, so if you're running a high flow fuel pump or high pressure fuel pump, you'll need to bypass that uh, extra fuel. So you will need to run a return line to your tank if you have a carbureted system that never ran a return before. So it might have been running a small regulator that just had to deal with a low pressure, uh, low pressure fuel pump. Uh, this does run a return style. So don't, uh, don't forget to run that return line back to the tank or fuel surge, surge tank or cell, whatever it is that you're running. Okay, everyone, so now you know a little bit about the range of EFI fuel pressure regulators. You can check them out at your local distributor, quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com. And don't forget, if you do need some more information or a bit of guidance with what product suits your application, you can send us an email at sales at aeroflowperformance.com.